When we were preparing this talk, we wanted to deliver a message that would resonate with as many people in the audience as possible. And that might seem obvious, but sometimes we take this for granted. It's impossible to pull each one of you aside and have like a 15 minute conversation with you and then a 15 com minute conversation with you because there's just not enough time. We would love to sit down with each and every one of you and give a talk that was customized to your interests and your experiences and the things that you've done in your past. But the fact of the matter is that we're standing in front of you right now. We're limited by this physical medium that we're in. And when you think about it, really all live performances are this way. And this isn't something that we think about very often. Generally, we think someone gets up on stage and they're just giving a performance. It's kind of something we take for granted that any live show you go to, any movie you watch, any song you listen to, any class session with a teacher and 30 students is going to be forcing the average of a teacher giving the average presentation that the average student would get the most out of, or a filmmaker making a movie that will entertain the most people that they can, or a musician playing to their audience, trying to entertain as many people as they can there. And that's really only a rule in the physical world, because we have to just say one thing, and you all hear it in this air. But as soon as things go digital, that rule can be broken. And this change really happens in two steps. The first step is taking some physical form of expression and replicating it in digital form. But the second step is taking that form of digital expression now and having it take advantage of the fact that it's digital. Yeah, a good example is the news. So we used to get newspapers all the time, and some people still get newspapers, but the news has largely moved online. And if you go to the New York Times website, it's got a lot of things that the New York Times paper doesn't have. I mean, everyone gets the same newspaper, but the New York Times site, you show up at the homepage, click on anything you're interested in, go over to this, go over to that, you jump around sections. And I imagine that if I printed out the New York Times website as a 500-page tome, you wouldn't get that much out of it. I mean, the same thing is true with Wikipedia, any website. They've moved beyond just a collection of words that most people can get something out of. They've moved towards something that can be customized and personalized. And every website's like this. All web designers design for this. They want most people to get like a unique experience out of it. They don't want every single person to be showing up and, and seeing the exact same thing. So let's talk about some other forms of expression. Let's talk about documentaries. So with documentaries, a filmmaker who's passionate about some topic goes out into the world and shoots 30 hours of footage on a topic that they're very passionate about. And they want to share that with the world. But the trouble is they're now faced with this very difficult choice of, well, now that I have 30 hours of footage, I now need to make a two-hour film that will appeal to the average person. Now, if you're someone that's just as passionate about the topic as the filmmaker, you'd probably love to see 10 hours of that footage. 30 hours, maybe. There are plenty but of movies that I'd love to see, all of the deleted scenes, all of the extra stuff that they cut out of it, but some other person would want to just see like 20 minutes. Yeah, I, I recently was talking to someone who, who went to a documentary screening, and uh, it was about an hour and a half documentary, and when they got done, the filmmaker told everyone, if you enjoyed this documentary, we have a two-hour version that we're showing next week. And this is not uncommon. People put together this content, but they're bringing from such a large library of very, very interesting material. Mm -hmm. And they're having this artificial constraint imposed on them because they have to sit down a large audience of people and give that same presentation to everyone. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, um, my friend worked on this documentary and they were screening it and they're like in the process of editing it together. And so they're still trying to decide what pieces to keep, what to put in, and what people are really interested in. And so after the movie was done, I loved it, and they asked for a question and answer session with the director. And I was like, oh, this is great. And I immediately was like, I love this character. I thought this was the best part. Uh, that, I didn't really understand what, was, what that was all about, but this part was great over here. And as soon as I was done talking, the person immediately to my left was like, no, 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 this was my favorite character. And I didn't like that at all, and I thought, maybe we should see more of this. And every single person that talked after me was a, a completely different perspective on it. Everyone has their own unique things. I mean, think of your favorite TV show. Do you have a favorite character? Do you have favorite characters? Do you have parts, episodes that you think are your favorite? I mean, everyone has their own unique things that are their favorite parts of it. And the fact that they're making one version for everyone means that you can't get that one part that you want expanded. You can't get all of that stuff swept away in favor of other content. So why don't we instead take a look at music? So music used to be entirely live. There was no such thing as recorded music. The reason why recording was invented was to give you some way to share music with a broader audience. But music by its nature is improvisational. And so once we had this ability to record, now we start ingraining songs onto some physical object. 
and we start distributing that physical object around the world so everyone can hear this song. But really, every time that song is performed, it's a little bit different. I mean, if you've ever been to a live show, you know they don't play it the same way that it is on the album. And there's a reason that they do this. Part of what you do is you come to these live shows to get a unique experience, to get that experience of listening to a song for the first time. Because we know that the version of the song that they play in the studio or on stage or in the tour bus on the way to the <laughs> next show is all completely different. So it brings up that question of, well, which one of those is the song? Which one of those is the creative creation? Well, it's really all of those things. The song is all of those things. So why do we try and impose this artificial constraint of writing songs with the mindset that at the end of the day, I have to make all these choices and get my song down to one version? And it really stems from the fact that we're still making these physical copies. I mean, we've gone away from vinyl, we went to cassettes and now CDs and now MP3s, and we've got these digital files that we think of as fixed. We think of them as just as printed and just as permanent as a vinyl record. But I mean, when I download like an executable for a video game, I mean, that's just as much of a digital file as an MP3 for a song, and yet every time I listen to the song, it's the same, but every time I play that video game, it's a completely unique and different experience. And that's why it's such a, a new and interesting and expressive medium because everyone can get something different out of it. Just like when you go to the website for the news, everyone takes a different path. Everyone has a different character, or goes on a different adventure, or does whatever you do in your favorite game. And the great part about it is that every time you sit down for a new session, it's a completely new experience. So if you think if you could have, if you could have your favorite band come and sit <laughs> in your living room with you and give you a performance that was personalized to you, you know that you wouldn't get the same experience that the person sitting next to you would. And the great thing about these artists, people that are creative, which really is all of us, is that we all have this ability inside of us to create unique experiences. And the digital form of expression that we now live in this age where that's possible no longer requires us to place these artificial constraints where we now have to treat everything as if it's ingrained onto a record. And that's part of the reason that people are talking about like gamification of education or gamifying other things. I mean, my to-do list is a game. I love any website that can turn things into a game for me. Uh, and, and teachers are really looking to this and saying, this is, this is a powerful paradigm. This is a powerful idea that every student can get a new and unique experience. Because that's moving away from the one teacher in front of 30 students, giving the exact same words, the exact same lecture, and then saying, everybody understand? Good? Everyone good? And I mean, you're never going to speak up and raise your hand, oh, can you just say the last 15 minutes over again? Just redo that. Or can we just skip this class and move on to tomorrow? I really, I already know all of this stuff. <laughs> because it really is such a personal experience. I mean, education is so much based on the things that we should be teaching students to be interested in, but everyone has their own unique curiosities. And one student isn't going to single themselves out because that's too scary. But teachers really are artists because if they were to sit down each one of those students, they would know how to give them a personalized lesson. They would know how to tailor the experience to pique their curiosity and take advantage of all the things that they find interesting. And, and people are, uh, teachers are trying to change this and to do unique things. I mean, I had a class, I think you had a class too, where uh, all the lectures were already recorded on YouTube. The professor had recorded everything during one of his years, and then every year after that, and every year since the year that I was there, he just uses the class time as a question and answer session. And every single time I watched those lectures on YouTube, I hardly ever watched them at 1x speed. I either watched them at 2x through the entire thing, and then I just replayed one section like, what are you, what are you saying? What is this word that you keep using? So I, I feel like everyone learns best that way. Everyone learns best when you're in control of the experience and when it's tailor-made to you. So another big part of education is, is textbooks. And textbooks are a really great example of something that's only taken that first step that we talked about. Textbooks have just made the step from, I now have my physical book, and now I've made it digital. And think about the, the tools they've, they've added for you know, interacting with your online books. <laughs> well, they basically just opened up your desk drawer and said, okay, oh, you got a pen in there. Here's a pen tool. You got a highlighter, here's a highlighting tool. You got a uh, piece of paper to write some notes on, well, here's a place to do some you can, annotations. You can bookmark it. You can turn the page. It's just, it feels exactly like a, a regular book. There's nothing especially digital about it. But really, the textbooks are our conduit to learning outside of the classroom. And textbooks right now, having only taken that first step, are really limiting the student experience. I mean, ignoring the fact that they're extremely expensive and very difficult to get a hold of sometimes for students, we can't necessarily create a, right now, what we consider to be an adaptive or personalized experience through textbooks. I mean, think about 
With all this information that's available online now, if I'm in a particular section of my textbook that I don't understand, it's possible for me to learn more about that topic by just kind of zooming out and saying, what more can you tell me about this? And that's something that you can't do with a physical book. You can't just ask the book, tell me more about this because I'm really interested in it. You have to go somewhere else to do that learning. And you also can't do things like, you know, we both studied physics, we deal with a whole bunch of equations. If I'm in chapter five and they're referring back to an equation in chapter one of the book, I gotta flip back to chapter one to see that equation. But I can just ask the book, well, what was that equation? And it should show up for me right there. And that's an example of taking advantage of the fact that it's digital. And it's pretty easy to imagine that. I mean, we're used to Wikipedia where you can click on almost any word on the page and go to another Wikipedia page. And so it's like, oh, okay, our textbooks could have links. Our textbooks could zoom into the text for more information. But there's no reason that every form of communication and expression that we have can take advantage of that. Every form of expression that isn't a completely n new and, and web 2.0 experience that you're exploring in a unique way, every step can take that. Music can take that. Film can take that. Anything in your life where you're trying to communicate something, or you're trying to teach something, or you're trying to express yourself can really benefit from taking advantage of, of, of digital media and what digital can do. One thing that I really find interesting is with creative fields, we, we kind of all reach a point if we're, if we're making something that's, that's creative where we turn to the person next to us or whoever's around and we say, which one of these do you like better? And it's kind of an interesting question. I mean, think about it. Why do we need to choose? We now have this, this opportunity where any story that we have that we think is worth telling or any song that we think is worth sharing can be shared. And if I get to a point, say I'm a songwriter, or I have two diverging ideas about how a song could go, I don't really need to choose which one is better. I like to think of it instead of making creative choices, you just expand on your creative possibilities. Because to choose and to operate under the assumption that, well, at the end of the day, I have to make one song. It's more like if you're going to the studio to, to make a song, think of it like going to the studio to make an album. Any idea that you think is worth pursuing, there's room to pursue it. And these ideas aren't conflicting anymore. If I have three different intros to my song that I think are very, very interesting, then I should keep them all. Because now, in this age of digital expression, it's possible to keep all those things. And it's possible to share all those ideas with the world. And we, we like that idea. I mean, that, that really, really excites us, the possibility of keeping everything in, instead of choices, possibilities. And when we were preparing this talk, we thought, man, it would be so cool if we could do that with our talk somehow. Like, if we could take all of the things, like we want to talk about these seven things, we'll put them on like a big board, and then people in the audience can like pick them or something. But if you think about what would happen there is, we ask you what you'd like us to talk about next, <laughs> you tell us something, the person next to you probably would have picked something completely different. Really, what we'd be doing is customizing the talk to nobody. But if instead we had, you know, vote yeah. by applause. Raise your hand if you want to hear this one. Raise your hand if you want to hear this one. Then we're back to where we started. Now we're forcing the average on everyone. But the fact of the matter is, if we gave this talk a hundred times, it would go a hundred different ways. And if we talked with any one of you individually, we would be able to find out, what do you, music, you feel? Oh, you play video games 18 hours a day. Let's talk about video games. Or if you're a teacher, we would probably talk about teaching for a couple of hours. Because we've, we've been talking about this stuff for years, and we're so excited to get to share it with you, but... We're, we're almost limited to kind of give you the overview because that's, that's what we have to do in order to reach as many people with this audience. And we'd love to sit down with each and every one of you and give you your talk. But unfortunately, we, we can't do that because here we are. Talking in air, physical medium. You standing can't, in front of you. Can't customize it, you can't digitize it. So my question to you is, if you do something that, that is creative, and I think we can all agree that we all do, what will you make in a world where your final product no longer has to be final? Where you can create as many unique experiences of, as you have members of your audience, just like we wanted to do for you today. For anything in your life, if it's your next presentation, the next poem you write, the next anything, the next any time you express yourself, you can take advantage of this idea. We're all, we're all naturally creative, and we should all maintain that creativity throughout our lives and take advantage of digital expression to share our ideas with the world. I'm really excited to see what you guys make. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.